You might think that climate change is a hoax and that 9-11 was an inside job. But the granddaddy of all conspiracies that we actually live on a flat earth seems to be making a comeback. Judd Ditch is a musician and helps manage an online clothing store. He's also convinced the earth is flat. I came into it like every flat earther and that was, this is preposterous, this is ridiculous and I need to debunk this ASAP. I looked at it all and I basically came back with the conclusion that Oh God, these flood earthers are right there onto something that the earth is either a lot bigger than they're saying it is, or it's flat. But Judd is far from alone. On the surface, Brett Watkins seems a pretty unlikely candidate for a flat earther. I do work for a major telecommunications company. I have been in that industry for 10 years now, and we do have to use satellite for transmission of, of data. Uh, I'm not saying that satellites don't exist. I think they, they do exist, but I don't think they exist how we're, we're told. You know, I found myself in sort a of weird position on uh, YouTube one night, watch video after video. Uh, I was out to uh, debunk the theory like anyone else. I wanted to challenge it because uh, it just didn't seem right. But the more I actually looked into it, things started stacking up and that's how I formed the view that the Earth is flat. Both Judd and Brent have assembled a vast array of information to support their flat view of the world. The key turning point was uh, the sun rising over the horizon. Instead of going up and above you like it does on the globe model, it actually rises uh, towards and above you across your field of view due to perspective. And for Judd, a large body of flat water like this provides one of the ultimate proofs. That water's not curving. It's impossible for water to curve when it's laying flat. Every time I'm up in a plane now, uh, which is quite regularly, um, you know, I'm looking for that curvature. That's just not there at 36,000 feet. Flat earthers believe the continents float on a sea, with the North Pole at the centre, Antarctica actually a giant ice wall around the outside keeping the water in, and the sun and moon directly overhead. You do actually have a summer at the North Pole. You've got flora, fauna, uh, thriving some months of the year. You don't have that in Antarctica. That's because this model is actually is actually real. And for this to work, you have to buy into some fairly large conspiracy theories. The first obvious problem is that Antarctica is not what you thought. No one's allowed to go there. Uh, it's military, peaceful operations only. And anyone that wants to explore Antarctica, they get taken to a small little tourist section, shown some penguins, yeah, and then off they go. But perhaps the biggest issue is photos like this from the Apollo 17 mission in 1972. For flat earthers, this is easily explained. Flat earthers believe that all photography from space uh, has an element of CGI to it, and I'm very much supportive of that as well. My question is, why don't we ever see a consistent photo of Earth? It's all imagery, uh, there's all Photoshop. And stunning video like this from the International Space Station falls into the same category. All of NASA's uh, stuff seems to be mostly fabricated. Uh, the International Space Station, they use augmented reality and green screen to fake a lot of their weightlessness. So why go to all that effort? So the motivation of why they're faking that the, the Earth is a globe, I believe, is to make you feel small and insignificant. Because if you're on this heliocentric model that gets pushed down our throat, you're actually small, insignificant, and life becomes more meaningless uh, than it actually is. Chris Fleming is a professor. Perhaps unsurprisingly, he has an issue with flat earther reasoning. So you go up to the 20th floor of a building, you look out the window and the earth's flat. You know, why, why have people kept this from me for uh, so long? Now that kind of thinking is uh, great when it comes to checking whether there's milk in the fridge, uh, but it's not so good when you are trying to look at, say, the curvature of the earth or physical geography. And the project's resident space guy has clearly been bought out by big space. You can literally disprove it in, in half a dozen ways yourself. You don't need massive resources. You can just look and see the shadows change. You can talk to someone in a different time zone. It's, it's bizarre. It is just really bizarre. The Flat Earth Movement has received some celebrity endorsement from US rapper B.O.B., who started a fundraising campaign to launch his own satellite so he can see what's really out there. I will be raising funds to try every available experiment and test, including, but not limited to, uh, weather balloons, drones, uh, blimps even. I actually have donated to B.O.B.'s mission, and I'd be first in line for a ticket if, if private space exploration existed and we could actually go up to these heights and, and see for ourselves, but we can't. 
people are becoming less and less trusting of their government. And once you go flat, you don't go back. <laughs> I've never met a flat earther that's gone back to the globe. Now the time to say thank the Lord for Steve Price. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know. I was sceptical until BOB got involved, and I thought. That's where they won me over. Once you go, once you go flat, stuff. you never go back. That's there. it. <laughs>